we've got the required practical from unit eight, which is chromatography. Now, chromatography is used to separate a mixture of dyes. It's quite a straightforward practical, but there's a couple of key points that we need to remember. So first of all, we need to draw a line on our chromatography paper. And we do this with pencil. It's a frequently asked exam question. We must use pencil. If we used ink, then the ink would run up the paper as well. So we must use pencil. Often then in exams, they will give you some known colours and you have to compare them to some unknown colours. So for this practical, I've got some blue ink. I'm going to put a dot of blue link, ink on the pencil line and I can label that as blue underneath. I'm going to put a dot of yellow dot of red and then a dot of the unknown colour. We'll call the unknown colour X. When we do chromatography, we put the chromatography paper into a solvent. In this case, I'm going to use water because these dyes are all soluble in water. And the water is the mobile phase. It will move up the chromatography paper and the colours will separate out as they go. And the reason that they separate is because they have different attractions to the stationary phase, which is the paper, and the mobile phase, which is the water. If you are more attracted to the mobile phase, then you will move faster up the chromatography paper. Whereas if you have a strong attraction to the paper, you won't move as fast. Now, so there are a couple of key points, and one of them was the pencil line. The second one is that when we put it into our uh, solvent, we must make sure that the solvent is below the pencil line and below the dots. If we don't do this, then all it'll do is it'll wash it straight off. I also like to use a splint just to suspend it in the beaker and a paper clip just to make sure that we attach it to the splint. We then leave that for a few minutes until the solvent has travelled all the way up the paper. So now that we've left that to run for a while, you can see that the colours have all separated out. Quite interesting that this blue has not just got blue in it, it's got some red in it as well. So there's two things that we can do from this. The first is quite a crude. If I look across and take my ruler, then the blue spot here lines up with the blue spot here. So we can say that the unknown has got blue in it. And if I look a bit further down, I can also see that there is some yellow in it as well. Now, that's fine for, for just a straight comparison and you can use your ruler to go down and find colours that match up with your known colours and your unknown colours and make a comparison. But we can also do a calculation, something called an RF value. And the way that we do that is when I took it out, I made a mark where my solvent front was. So my RF value is the distance travelled by the dot divided by the distance travelled by the solvent. Now, as our solvent front is in the same place for all of them, this will be constant in all our calculations. But when we're comparing different dots, then the distance travelled will be different. And so our RF values will be different. I'm going to take this blue dot and work out the RF value of that. So using my ruler, I can see 
that the solvent front has travelled 36 millimetres. And then I will take the bottom of the dot, and it doesn't matter whether you take the bottom, the middle or the top, as long as whenever you're comparing, you use the same place. And for this one, that has travelled 32 millimetres. So my RF value is 32 divided by 36. And that is 0 0.8888. But often they will ask you to do this to two decimal places. So in which case it's 0 0.8. I look at my second decimal place and the figure directly to the right of it is an 8, which is greater than 5. So my second value is a 9. So my RF value for that dot would be 0 0.89.